Hi Dan, well here we are again and last week we left with the message of saying that we need to concentrate and we need to be committed and I think that's what we got from the Springboks last week. Your thoughts? Thank you Mark, well absolutely. Um, the Springboks have finally broken the losing streak in Australia uh, and, and the one uh, very impressively and with a very dominant performance. Uh, superbly led by Sia Khaleesi, I must say. He was far and away my man of the match and played one of his best ever games in the green jersey and, uh, and uh, seems to have found uh, uh, an, another sort of string to his bow. Uh, a very interesting test match in retrospect. Uh, during the match, it was very disappointing. Uh, the Springboks made an incredible amount of errors. I just... Uh, I was counting them at one stage and I said, we, we can't do this, you know. Um, and uh, when you look back on it, we should have probably have won by more, but for the errors. And one of the interesting things, of course, that did happen is uh, Damon Willemsen playing at fly half. I think that was forced on the coaches uh, because of injury, but it has given the Springboks a whole new dimension. He actually gave the Springboks a whole new dimension. Damon Willemsen, to me, is a very interesting young player. He's uh, got latent talent by the buckloads, but bucket loads, but. Uh, to me, at the moment, he's a 70-30 player. In other words, what I'm saying is he's 70% excellent and 30% indifferent. He needs to improve that. So he's very one-footed. Uh, his kicking out of hand is not what it should be for an international fly-off. And his goal kicking let him down. So there's work to be done. Uh, his, uh, but he, he does uh, bring uh, some really promising things to the spring box. And he changed the way we play. Um, and... Um, that, I think, might actually have led to some of the errors because the Springboks are not a side used to the ball being passed among the backs and having to run onto the ball. They are a side that uh, still tends to kick the ball too often, kick the ball too easily, and I think Damien's presence in the number 10 jersey d did that. So there's an accidental thing that happened. We now have another fly half other than Pollard and Yankees, and, and that is a worry because those are the two goal kickers. There's not a goal kicking fullback. So Damien Willems has arrived. He's given them another option. I think something else that was very uh, impressive for me was the debut of young uh, Kanan Moody, who outjumped uh, uh, Koroboiti for an outstanding try. And I have to give uh, a nod, acknowledgement uh, to my former colleague and friend, Supersport uh, commentator, um, uh, Matthew Pierce, who said uh, uh, Kanan was most able. <laughs> and then we move on um, into the test match itself. The Springboks played with determination uh, and a sort of a simmering anger throughout the game. Uh, and I was a little bit disappointed with that. But the, uh, the culprit was no, none other than Nick White. Uh, who I felt uh, had caused all the trouble in the previous test with his little uh, dropping down on the field like a soccer player. Uh, he was never censored for that. And, and that mood in the test match, which is unfortunate, you don't want to see that, uh, was caused by Nick White. And I think it's disgraceful that uh, World Rugby hasn't, uh, hasn't come down on him and on Australia to sort that out. Uh, and so what we saw was a test match with a lot of bickering, a lot of chirping at the referee. And I must say uh, the Kiwi ref um, uh, was outstanding in, in the way that he put up with the, the players. Uh, but I'd like to see the Springboks stay away from that. Willie, Willie LaRue uh, was, was a main culprit. And, uh, and I, uh, I just, it's, it's not the way to go because you're going to run into a referee somewhere down, down the way that won't have the, the patience and won't put up with it. So Australia's done, and a very interesting thing now to me that has happened in the new rugby is that the Springboks are still in Australia. They, uh, they elected to stay in Sydney to prepare for their next trip, which is to Argentina. And obviously that makes a lot of sense. Instead of coming home to South Africa, you go straight to Argentina. But it means it's a, it's a long trip for them before they play in Buenos Aires. Um, and uh, in our next uh, little chat, Mark, uh, we'll see how the box will go on the Pampas. Wonderful. Thanks, Dan. Look forward to that. Bye-bye.